I was in a, a ballroom where there were about 500 people seated. And this man came and sat in a chair and transformed the space. He was consciously aware. He didn't have his eyes closed. He wove in the sound of a siren. He uh, included a color that was in the first row. He's always surprised me. He's always thrown something out of balance in order for something new to happen. And I feel that's the essential quality of our relationship. I was drawn by his dynamism, his love, his energy. And when music started to happen around him in the form of singing, I had to be there. The mark of my work is to release in the individual their own worth by correct identity. And that identity isn't achieved by me telling them anything. It's achieved by them willing to associate their thought with something that they might term perfect, something called God, the source, the self, or principle. And it is this principle upon which man bases his life. Twelve. Nine. I thought this was ten. No, go on. Go on. Eleven. One more. Twelve. Thank you. He thought he was going to do ten, and I said twelve, and he said no. I thought it was ten, and he just made it, and that was it. And I said there was a sadistic flavor to it, you know. It's the best way to grow. <laughs> That's the best way to grow, really, to yeah. do the impossible. <sighs> My parents introduced me to Mr. Mills when I was six years old, and I'll never forget the magic and the wonder that was surrounding this man. And my memory brings me to when he passed me a grapefruit when, from one of his grapefruit trees and, and passed it to me and said, this is yours. And it was, it was like meeting the real Wizard of Oz. Exactly. What's on each key? The weight of your arm. The weight of your arm. Do it again. Walk up. Walk up. Walk up the keyboard. You do it. Stay on your thumb. That's it. Good for you. <laughs> Why can't we have peace in the world? Because there is no common agreement on a basis of speech. The modern day dictionaries are destroying the meaning of words and the fine words are being termed archaic. Well, I can assure you that the words I use are not archaic, but they are challenging the looseness of conceptual thinking. Words should be fitly spoken. And they should be like apples of 
gold, you know, and dishes of silver. And words carry the power to move one either into ignorance or into freedom. Running! Dabbin! Dobbin color! Who is running? Errant brother! Who is shining? Shifting! Splicing! All the landscape! With colors blighted? Streaming! Strumming! Humming! Sounding! Do you hear wonder bounding? Mr. Mills gave that poem while we were driving in a car in Rudesheim, Germany, along the riverside. And it was an experience where Mr. Mills just kept offering poems one after another in response to what he was seeing. And what was really remarkable about it was that even at one point I asked him a question about something that had just proceeded and he responded by giving his answer in another poem. So that it, what is this presence is this little poem that stands in the middle of an eleven poem suite. What is this presence? Pounding. Founding. Splicing. Wonder. Color. Magic. Conception. Confluence. Happening. River running. Rapid rapids falling. The leaves leafing. Wonder. Wonder. All right. Now watch me. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Makes you dizzy. <laughs> I know. Here. Now watch what happens. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. I love. love. Go on. I love. Hey. Do it again. is labeled by another. A teacher's credentials give him the qualifications as a teacher. The qualifications of a mentor are only known as an experience. Pretend you're going with it traveling with the sound, because it's a wave as you are, in essence. Yes. The only thing that changed was your attention to what's there. Would you show me that third? I heard of Mr. Mills years ago, but I didn't meet him until two years ago. And on meeting him, I realized that he represented something I've always been looking for. It's infinite energy, uh, relationship with yourself and the universe, actually. And all this is expressed through music, and I feel that it's helped me find myself and find my place in music.
never have no, heard that before no, in my life. Never heard that I'm going to buy that thing and have it focused on everyone. Because as, as I do, everyone changes, and I mean it. I never heard better <laughs> attempts. Thank you very much, Tamara. He works in an amazing way using techniques that, well, we call them techniques. He moves intuitively, as far as I can see. And the results have been unbelievable freedom of expression for me. What is the rapture of being? The uninterrupted flow of new inspiration. It's the redeemed volcano, not the molten lava, nor the ash of explosion, but the verbology of inspiration that allows you to take a deep breath and bear the tide of newness and its inherent feeling. The experience of these keyboards is almost an answer to a prayer because I'm impatient with writing by hand. The concept appears to formulate within me and I hear it all at once. It doesn't come from um, a thought process at all. It comes from almost an unknown uh, intuitive prompting. I do not know what note I will play next. And um, it's always a great interest to me when I finish to sit down and hear what I've done. Because I hear it when I do it. But I, if I allowed myself to consider what I was doing, my head would be involved. And of course, Wing Victory gives us a great, teaches us a great lesson. To fly, you don't have a head. Well, this is great. All right. Would you play the B lighter on the G, more pronounced on the D? Lighter on the G, lighter on the D, and then so that the ear is hearing from the D. Boom. One. Ah, that's exactly the way I want you to play it now and tie them. That's got the shape. Play it exactly like that. When you know, you know, you know, you know. When you know, two and two is four. You don't have to go around telling people, I know two and two is four. <laughs> well, when you know, you know, you don't go around telling people, you know I'm enlightened. <laughs> no, you can't because I don't know what it means. I believe it's a term we give to something that we don't want to accept. A term of being authentic and calling it enlightened. But who wants to be enlightened and walk among people who appear to think they're not and thus have no sense of being confined in thought, word, or deed to principle?
Where's your blue? Yes. I've never asked anyone to worship me or to adore me. But of course, if they seem to in the beginning, it's because they are so looking for something to love. But it's so wonderful to be able to talk to them and tell them, but what you see in me is all arising within you. So everything you attributed to me is really all within yourself. Now be that and leave me alone. Everyone is looking to the new century, which is about to dawn. It will never be more than they have dreamed at this moment. It will only be this moment prolonged. And what is this moment going to be? One endowed with the limitations of bias, envy, jealousy, fear, resentment, or is it going to be a time that loses its force and a space that loses its pressure and man be perhaps able to appear unbound in mind or body because his soul is found a beating vital, rhythmic impulse pointing to the actual vital, dynamic feeling of being I am. <laughs> 